Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and today I feel like I just want to have a chat. Um, sorry if I sound a bit tired, I've just come back from a flight, very long flight. Uh, and I'm still in my uniform, uh, I'm just gonna have a shower after this and then go to bed and get some sleep. The reason why I want to have a chat with you is because once again I've uh, I've had this conversation with a flight simmer who asked the, in, in my opinion, perfectly reasonable question, could a Microsoft flight simulator pilot fly and land a real aircraft? Uh, now first of all, I don't think this is a simple yes or no question uh, because uh, there are all kinds of different flight simulator pilots out there. There are those who really uh, get into the details of all the study simulation aircraft. And then of course we have those who yeah, don't even understand the difference between a knot and mark. Uh, so I think we should discount the second um, group of people and just concentrate on the ones that are really into uh, study level simming and looking at uh, into all the technical details of the aircraft they fly. So let's say you find yourself, let's say on an A320 and you're really good with the Phoenix Airbus A320. I actually do believe this person could program an aircraft to perform an auto land uh, and let the aircraft do its thing. The problem is uh, just programming an auto land is not good enough because you have to get the aircraft um, actually to the ILS. So that means flying an entire approach uh, and ideally you should be performing some kind of a landing performance calculation so you know what kind of auto brakes you need and whether you need reverses or not. Um, and for that you need weather and so you need to know where in the MCDU you can request weather from different airports. Uh, you also need to be able to communicate with ATC. So you need to know how to work the radios. Uh, in Europe we now use CPDLC in a lot of airspaces. So there's actually usually no communication between us and the controllers. It's all via CPDLC. So do you know how any of these things work? I think most teams don't and to be fair they don't need to it's, it's not a requirement if you fly a sim uh, but this is already a stumbling block uh, because without those things things can already get very complicated and very messy so it's not just good enough to be able to program an MCDU you need to know not just how to fly an aircraft or program it you need to know how to operate it and this is the big difference between simming and flying. Uh, you know, I, I used to be a really active sim. I used to log thousands of hours on different sims before starting my training. And did it help me? Yes, absolutely. It gave me an edge over colleagues that had never flown before. Did it give me a better understanding once we started actually learning about airliners? Yeah, absolutely, it does help. But the jump from flight simming, especially a home flight sim, to a real aircraft is just huge, absolutely huge. There's so much stuff going on that you never even think about when you uh, fly at home in your living room or your bedroom. And I just want to be clear here, this is not about uh, making flight simmers feel bad or anything like that. It's just that uh, I interact quite often with flight simmers and whenever they hear that I'm a real world pilot, uh, this question, you know, could I, do you think I could land a real aircraft? It, it usually comes up at some point uh, sooner or later. So this is why I really want to address this. Uh, just you know, to give you my personal opinion, other people may have different opinion, uh, different opinion, but um, this is just how I see it. Um, I, w I would like to give an example. So when you start your sim, I, I suppose you just jump into the aircraft, you do your flows, you make sure everything is correct, 
uh, make sure everything is connected and then you start up uh, the batteries and then you connect it to the ground power and then uh, you go through your checklists to basically power up the aircraft and that seems realistic but actually in the real world there is way 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 more than this going on uh, when we arrive at the aircraft uh, the first thing we do is check the number of chocks because there's a strict guidance uh, when an aircraft is considered on chocks and when not. Then we check if the external air is connected, so if the airport is providing us with air conditioning. If this is the case, then we need to go around to check if the outflow valve is in the open position. Because if, eight, if uh, maintenance has done some work and the outflow valve was closed, and uh, the airport is pumping uh, air into the aircraft, it's possible that the pressure inside the aircraft is larger than outside and opening the door could be quite dangerous. So that's another thing we check. Uh, then uh, we look uh, around the area near the APU. Is it safe to start the APU once we're inside the aircraft? Uh, also worth uh, taking a look on the right hand side doors because these are the ones we use on ground uh, for an evacuation are they clear uh, can we board right now uh, with this uh, configuration with uh, ground vehicles around the aircraft uh, once all that is done we walk up the steps uh, or stairs into the aircraft usually have a quick look into the cabin and the galley is there anything out of place do we see anything that shouldn't be there and only then do we enter the cockpit and uh, start the flow so this is just one small example where you can see um, in the real world there's just way more stuff to consider way more stuff going on and uh, the depth of uh, knowledge required is just uh, it's just on a different level so where does that leave us um, like I said at the beginning, I don't think this is a yes or no question. Could a flight simmer land an aircraft? I would say maybe, maybe. If everything goes well, uh, if everything is in the favor of the person in the cockpit, I think it could be done. But um, let me make this very clear, it would have to be an auto land. Hand flying? Forget it. It's, it's, no. That's not going to work. It would be an auto land, uh, fully programmed, and the aircraft does everything. And somehow the simmer would have to figure out how to perform a landing calculation or at least speak to someone on the ground that, uh, that uh, could advise him or her on uh, which settings to use for the landing. And then maybe it could be done. But uh, like I said before, uh, do not underestimate the difference, the huge jump from flying a flight simulator to a real aircraft. There's a lot to it, which is why it takes uh, many years of training before you anywhere, before you're allowed anywhere near an airliner. Uh, it's why uh, type rating is a very tough and exhausting thing uh, that requires tons and tons and tons of studying and learning and sim checks and all sorts of things and then you go onto the line and you have uh, line training and you do that for quite some time and then you have a line check so you know these are all these things and they're not just for fun they are for a reason because operating an airline is actually quite complex and there's a lot of stuff going on uh, in daily operations and that's just when things are normal uh, if when things are going wrong be it weather or something wrong with the aircraft or maybe a medical emergency then uh, that adds a whole other dimension so this is how I see it uh, and I hope you you understand where I'm coming from and I hope you don't take it personally when I say uh, that probably most simmers would not be able to do so and if then it would have to be an auto land. That's my answer to that question uh, that I've been asked many many times now and this is why I wanted to make this video. 
if you want to have a discussion about it uh, absolutely be my guest I'm always interested in hearing different opinions and different viewpoints uh, but this is how I see it okay and with that I'm gonna get out of my uniform now I'm gonna have a shower and go to bed because I've been up for 20 something hours and uh, I can barely keep my eyes open thanks for listening I hope you found this at least somewhat interesting uh, I know it's a bit of a hot topic I hope you forgive me for delving into it but uh, I just felt like it should be done okay then uh, thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next one until then all the best bye bye